a misbehaving community who reacted poorly to a rules announcement. What? <laughs> this is Flight Check Season 4, Episode 23. What? <laughs> We're back. Once again, talking all aspects of FlyQuest and making passing references to Wizards Magic of the, the Coast Gathering? and Commander and uh, some okay. of the more unfortunate news coming out of that uh, Okay, oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, I understand. <laughs> I, I, I got the connection now. I understand. Yes. It's a, it's I, a I link was What a way to open the show. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it was the relevant thing that I could come up with. Uh, yes. You know, there was also the option of, like, holy, multiple celebrities dying in the last two days, you know, but I decided, uh, you know, to not make that the official intro for the, the show, which I kind of quasi did just now, but I mean, we'll just keep on rolling. My name, as oh, always, goodness. is Sandy Toes, and to my left and my extra left are non-Magic the Gathering players, uh, Nox War and Curly Double Q. Fellas, I, I'm back in a Hearthstone. Does that count? <laughs> uh, you know, that's uh, it's almost almost the same. Uh, it's pretty pretty close, I would say. Um, I'm gonna pick up Yu-Gi-Oh. Hey. Ooh. Okay. You know, I I actually so unironically, I have started watching the original, like, subbed Yu-Gi-Oh show uh, because I wanted to go back. And kind of like watch it all from the beginning. Turns out the story makes so much more sense when you're not watching the four kids adaptation. I'll be honest, there was there was a story. <laughs> there was there's actually like there, so that whole the, I believe that so I believe that wholeheartedly. Like that iconic first season, right? With Pegasus and they go to Duelist Kingdom on the island. Did you know that the whole reason that thing, ha that tournament happens, is because Pegasus, who, by the way, uh, his name is not Pegasus in the Japanese version. He's uh, Pegasus J. Crawford, uh, I believe. Uh, is oh, he has, like, a legit name? He has a real name, wow. and he's very distinctly American. Like, he's clearly made out to be the American bad guy, which I think is very interesting. Uh, this but is... different than the other American guy that, like, Joey Wheeler's, like, rival. Oh, yeah, with, right? Bandit <laughs> Keith. Yeah, ba Bandit Keith is still yeah, there. Yeah, right? Bandit Keith. Okay, so, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, so, so Pegasus. Um, he, the board executives of Kaiba Corp backstab Kaiba and are working with Pegasus behind the scenes to orchestrate uh, a takeover of Kaiba Corporation. And... They will only let Pegasus do the takeover if Pegasus beats Yugi in a duel. So Pegasus orchestrates the entire tournament so that Yugi will come to the island, get all the 10 starships, and battle Pegasus in a duel so that Pegasus can take over Kaiba Corp. That's the actual plot line of Yu-Gi-Oh! Season 1. So does that mean like Pegasus was like cursing out uh, the the bug kid on the boat when he was throwing away Yugi's cards, going like, "No, I need him to have his deck." Well, remember he's got the Millennium Eye, so this is all like going as he's foreseen. You know, he's practically Emperor Palpatine oh, right here. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. As I have foreseen. Yeah, you know, it's like he's got the whole thing on lockdown. Uh, so it's actually fascinating. There's way more guns. Uh, in the show. I believe that. I believe There's that. There's in you, you know? <laughs> it, it, there, Like, a, uh, a security guy holds a gun to Kaiba's head. Uh, oh, my goodness. Other security guys shoot Whoa. at Kaiba in, a, in another episode. Dude, it's... The show's actually kind of baller. Now, here's the funny thing, <laughs> and this will be the last thing I say about this show. The actual mechanics of, like, the card game in the show completely made up. Like, there, there's, like... No, like they do not obey any rules whatsoever. Like it'll be something like I like they'll power up this like fire sword man with this like fire spell card, and the fire spell card does more damage to like this grass guy 
or you know because oh yeah there, there, there was, I, this was in four kids too there was it was like pokemon uh kind of yeah. like effects there's another episode there's there's the Weird. episode where the uh he, yugi battles the guy on the uh who's like the fisherman or something and yugi plays a card that's like it sets up a full moon or whatever, so it like raises the tide or whatever, and then he has his he has his character who has a sword destroy the moon, and that pulls the tide back and strands all of the his opponent's creatures, weakening them. All. Like this is it's all completely made up. There's no rules here. So what? Yes, the rules are all made up and the points are meaningless. And the points truly do not matter. Uh, but you know what did really matter uh, was Hundred Thieves' performance. Uh, <laughs> what a transition! I nice, good. Andor, their lack thereof of a performance in play. Absolute insanity. We're gonna, <laughs> that you switch that way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, look, you can count on me for for the all time greatest segues. Uh, yeah, we're gonna talk play ins, recap a little bit. And then we're going to preview, we can really only preview day one of Swiss, maybe do a little forecasting down the line, and then we will talk about FlyQuest versus GAM uh, specifically. Sandy, you didn't intercept the script? You know, I wish I could, uh, because then I would win pickums, uh, and Knox would have to send me a jersey. Uh, so and and I think I would get accused of uh, some cheating if that were to there happen. There probably so. would be some level of <laughs> favoritism, collusion. Uh, you know, I you know I definitely did not send my uh, day one picks to Knox fifteen minutes after the first game started, but I had not watched any of it. I was just like, I promise I haven't seen any of the game. And then I like turned on the stream, wound it back, and watched it on like one point seven five x. Uh, How dare up. you besmirch his good pickums? Uh, his pickums are the best pickums, folks. Uh, you say that, Curly, but you did the exact same thing. <laughs> you forced my hand. I was going to concede. I was going to concede, and you were like, Curly, just give them to me. I'm like, okay. Here you go. Get your picks in. I ha you have to have all the flight crew playing. Have to have them all. Oh, in. goodness. Uh, Shout all out right. to my zero points yesterday. My goodness. Let's get into just a bit of a world's plans recap um obviously the big 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 thing from north america is hunter thieves dropping out uh and i just want to get the immediate reaction from both of you it they looked really bad uh, especially that final series against PSG. Truly horrific. Um, like, I, I couldn't even really come up with many positive takeaways uh, from it. And, you know, I'm, I'm normally the guy who's like, oh, yeah, let's get the rookies, like, some world's experience time. At least they can get that. I don't really know what they learned <laughs> from, <laughs> from this tournament. Uh, Fair enough. I, I don't. I'm not sure there was a, a lot of learning. There was just a lot of getting beaten down. Um, what were your, what were your takes on the whole thing? Uh, I mean, I I felt like Sniper displayed some quality moments, and that for me is actually probably that's kind of reassuring in the sense that I think he's like the best prospect on that team and one of the best prospects along with like Masu, obviously, because those are the two guys that were competing for rookie of the year. Um, I think it's most important that he especially gets a lot of the training and practice against all these international top laners and just the overall general vibe of what it's like to play on the world stage. So I, I think that's a really, really good takeaway for me in my, in my opinion. But overall, I would highly agree that this hundred thieves team was ex an extreme disappointment. I, I, I mean, I've said on the past podcast, I've said in Discord, I've said on, I think even on Twitter, I don't really talk that much on Twitter, but um, I th this was the fourth seed for NA. Like, I, don't get me wrong, a lot of people were like, oh, but they lost, uh, Cloud9 lost fair and square to 100 Thieves, 100 Thieves clearly deserve a spot over Cloud9, and that's all well and true. That doesn't change the fact that in terms of overall, like, if you were to have them play 100 games worth, Cloud9 probably wins that, like, 60 to 40 right they're still the better team overall on any other given day right but um 
it, at the end of the day, 100 Thieves won that series, and so they're the ones who got to go to Worlds, and that is what is earned, and that is what is fair, and I respect that. But they, they're still only the fourth best team in North America at best. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I never had high expectations for them. But I still also said that I expect them to make it out of play-in stage because no North American team have ever faltered here at Worlds. And uh, I was fine with them going like 0-4 in the main stage. But I expected him to get out. So losing to Rainbow Seven, who, in my opinion, uh, was supposed to be the worst team, and I will admit they were not the worst team. They definitely really? eclipsed Japan in that aspect. Um, but even still, they're still one of the worst teams at Worlds, in my opinion. And so you you losing like losing to them is really really bad, in my opinion. And then the loss to PSG is kind of whatever. Although the actual quality of the loss was really really bad, but I was never expecting anything more than a two zero from PSG because I still think they're really really good. And there's a very very large gap between hundred thieves and what PSG is able to display. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I definitely felt that as soon as I saw that they were going to have to go up against PSG, that it was pretty cooked. Uh, Curly, what were your takeaways uh, from hundred thieves dropping out so quickly, being the 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 laugh? The laughing stock of worlds this this year. I mean the the drop to R seven was really just kind of a shocker because I don't think anyone could have predicted that. It's right. just kind of <laughs> very contradictory to your expectations. Like not even. I like to predict for spice. Sometimes there's a lot of spice uh, pickers out there. I don't think spice pickers are picking R seven to win over um, hundred thieves. So that really just kind of came out of nowhere, and I think it's like. I think it's kind of a result of how this team was this entire year is like their first showing on the international stage where the only one with previous experience was river. Mm -hmm. Um, it just kind of, kind of like unfortunate that this event is where it happened. Cause it's like, if you had been able to make that happen at MSI or something, or like maybe a more forgiving worlds, like, yeah, but just to go out like that, it kind of really like might, hurts your pride uh when you're it's your first time doing it um but especially when there's a good chance you uh might be facing that same organization consistently next season but on the flip side of it it's like all right well now you uh have someone you want revenge on so if you stick around next season you're um you're gonna be motivated for that but yeah i think the other side of it though is psg for me have kind of like proved themselves as the gatekeeper to NA uh, at international tournaments this year. Mm -hmm. I empathize a lot with uh, how 100 Thieves fans uh, feel because we dealt with the same thing at MSI <laughs> where we got... <laughs> so it's like PSG just for some reason is like, oh, NA, that's my opponent. Let me just Let me turn just everything on. Give some SmackDown, yeah. Give some SmackDown. Maple is like salt... Even though it was TSM, even though it was just Reggie, he's like, all right, I'm not in that region anymore. I'm just going to keep them from getting anywhere. Right, right. <laughs> you know? So yeah. I, I'm very excited to see PSG on the main stage, though. Um, huge upset potential there. I actually think overall, too, aside from the macro uh, of pain gaming and r7's like best of three i do think these teams are like actually going to be very exciting challenges for the main stage yeah uh even mad lines because they they dominated way more than i expected them to they, they, they have to play the number one korean seed first round so we'll see how that looks yeah but... that'll be that'll certainly be an interesting matchup um yeah so yeah, Swan Song for 100 Thieves ripped to them. Uh, you know, we'll see them back next year. Per some of the reporting, they'll be back for the America's League next season. However, a couple interesting surprises. Now, one of the teams to beat 100 Thieves was Rainbow Seven, who supposedly 100 Thieves had been stomping in scrims, uh, from what we were led to understand. According to Sniper, he was doing "quote unquote" things to Summit right. in the scrims. Yeah, uh, and then Rainbow Seven gets the two one, gets bodied by Gam uh, two zero, and then Pain Gaming uh, after taking a game off of PSG 
and making things look interesting in that series. Then proceed to 2-0 Vikings and get the 2-1 over Rainbow 7. And I just want to point out, unironically now, two North American teams and one team from the CB Law in World Swiss is pretty much exactly how Ooh, we just started America's early baby world seeding is supposed to work next year. This is a preview. One team from the North conference, one team from the South conference, and then the number twos go up against each other to see who gets that final spot. Uh, and I, I feel pretty good that probably team liquid would have beaten the number two Brazilian team. Uh, I feel pretty good, pretty confident on that one. Um, but I mean, really got to say hats off to pain gaming for making it in definitely not an easy bracket. You know, they got thrown up against PSG early. Uh, remember last week when I said, I believed in pain gaming, you know, and, and I let but, you guys talk me out of it. We should have, I'm lo- to you. we should have, I'm okay. suffering 10 points on my pickums because of that. <laughs> But did you predict it to come off of 100 Thieves losing to Rainbow 7, though? It doesn't matter how you get there. (laughs) I predicted it. In fact, the other thing I predicted just the wrong way was that three of the teams would come from one group. I just picked the wrong group. Mm. (laughs) Because, like, I I was looking earlier and I was like, wait a damn second. It was actually while I was making the graph behind us. Is like I had the ribbon and I was like, all right, I got to switch things out. Let me get more. Oh, wait, I only had to move one logo. That's all I had to do. <laughs> it was easy. Saved me so much time. Oh, goodness. I'm salty. I want those 10 points. Seeing everyone else have 30 uh, and me just sitting down there at 20. It feels like a betrayal. World's pickums are my shit, dude. I won every leaderboard I was in last year. I'm salty. Anyway, back to the show. No, I think that's a worthy rant. Uh, (laughs) Nox, how big do you feel like this is for pain gaming, for CB LOL, going into, you know, they're about to lose a couple teams as they consolidate down for Americas. Uh, How big is this for Brazil to make it to Swiss in this final year before everything changes? I think it's absolutely massive. Um, A, it shows like, hey, just because we're merging, like, we're not, like... Because beforehand, like, if one of the Thieves had made it in and Pain Gaming had not, it would have been three North American teams, no CB LOL teams for the eighth year in a row, right? Because the last time CB LOL had made it into the main stage was INTZ back in 2016. So going into next year, when we're in this new uh, format and Brazil's automatically getting a seed, all the NA fans are going to sit here going like, well, they don't freaking deserve it. They haven't done anything in over nine years at this point, in, in that pr- point in time. And so now what CB Lowell gets to do and all the Brazilian fans get to do is like, we made it in and even better, your third seed did not. This proves that we are good enough to earn this slot. And so more power to them. It gives them all the right in the world to defend themselves and boast and uh, be glad and happy that like, hey, we have teams that are good enough to be able to do this. And there's no argument to be made. They were good enough to do it. They earned it fair and square. So... I'm just I'm very very excited and happy for Brazilian fans to be able to actually defend themselves going into next year. Otherwise, I think there's going to be a lot of animosity going forward between uh, LCS or Northern North Conference fans versus South Conference fans. So this kind of balances out a little bit. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, I think it's just absolutely a huge moment for them. They finally, you know, they get to hang their hat on something here. You know, ultimately, right. Uh, and it's going to be a tough road, uh, tough road to hoe for them because I mean, first matchup they've got, you know, they're going up against oh, who they get G two, right? G two. That's going to be rough. Um, but but I also think, doable. But also doable. Like G two is has not like did not look good uh, coming out of like uh, did they win LEC? You know, they did that the European Golden Road. Yes, they did. Uh, but did they look good doing it in that final couple months? No, they really did not. Um, and this is the best of one setting. You just need one game. Anything can and happen. And hey, in best they, they took a game off PSG. It's true. Uh, Curly, what are the odds 
like if you had to give it a percentage, uh, the odds that Pain takes this game off of G two. I'm going to put it low, dog. <laughs> like I, I like like if you're doing a 90-50-10, yeah. I'm putting this in the 10 as a as a generosity because like look, like I said, it is it, it is very hype. I'm very happy for Brazil. They like really showed that they were better than R7. In fact, like Chita, oh my gosh, that bot lane top tier. He just gapped um, the eighty. What was it? Sayo over on a uh, R seven. He mm -hmm. just hold time. Um, so like he's real good, but overall, the team uh, calls and movements <clears throat> pretty questionable. Yeah, very questionable. It was like game three <laughs> was so unpredictable. Not because both teams were making such amazing plays. But both teams were trying to see who could throw harder. <laughs> and in the end, Pain Gaming won because of it. So, like, I think G2 has had some time off. They've shaped their shit up um, after not dominating Mad like they should. They're not going to be happy with that. And then most importantly, like, Caps is just someone who I think, like, bring rallies his team when it comes to worlds mm -hmm. so like g2 at worlds like they, they they're just on a different level so pain game is going to be obliterated i wouldn't be surprised if like there's a world my 50 percent on that is that um this might be one of the shorter matches in the mm -hmm. entire uh main stage sub 25 um, perhaps could be sub 20 we've seen it before um, not banking on it could be there. And then, of course, my 90% uh, is that... <laughs> Who was a G2 Strangler real quick? Yike? Yike. Yike. Yeah, that Yike... Uh, my 90%? Yike Flame Horizons, uh, their jungler. Yikes. That's my 90%. Yikes. Carry I mean... Okay. Carry okay? Yeah, car carry okay. I mean... He's he was real good. In... He was real good. Real, real good. Also, the head of a lot of problematic plays. <laughs> I was going to say, Karaoke is probably the weakest jungler going into the main stage, but I don't think Yike is that dominant. No, I, it's not based on Yike being that dominant. It's based on G2 at Worlds. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a very key thing. All right, maybe not Flame Rising, <laughs> but I, I do think the, the macro is going to be in favor of G2. Right. Sure. No, I, that... Uh, fair enough. Uh, it's truly a fair fair take on it. Um, all right. Any final things standing out to you guys from play-ins before we start looking ahead to Swiss as a whole? We already started doing that a little bit, but any final things on play-ins from you guys? Um, I this think... might be the most exciting play-ins I've ever watched. I thought it was a great play-ins. Yeah, this was a fantastic play-ins. I absolutely love this play-ins. And I, I say that with deep sadness about 100 Thieves not making it. Right. It was a great play-ins. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, I think that's uh, a good place to call it there on play-ins. Let's move ahead to Swiss. All the matches are set for day one day one my god i can't believe eight hours straight of games probably longer you know with delays and ads and everything 8 a.m to 3 p.m i mean that's a full work day right there I, I mean, oh yeah just, that's just glorious um central european time you're gonna be rocking and rolling if you're in berlin Korea, it's tough. Korea's got uh, a tough one right now. Games are starting at 9, end at like 5 in the morning. You could like go to sleep, theoretically, and then wake up and games are still happening. Man, that's a that's a tough one. Um, that is rough. Yeah. Alright, so first eight matches are set. Looking at these eight, uh, excluding FlyQuest versus Gam, because we are going to talk about this matchup more extensively. Uh, what matchups stand out to you guys the most? One or two matchups that 
for each of you guys. You're like, this is a must watch. Can't wait to see what goes down. I think for me, I'm going to have to give it to Fnatic versus Damwon. Uh, those are the two. Like, like, <laughs> Fnatic's just so scrappy, and then Damwon and LCK is just so scrappy. Uh, I, I think that's going to be a very explosive best of one. So It's uh, going to be I'm, hilarious. I'm, I'm going to have to go with that one. Plus, I think Showmaker versus Caps is just a very fun matchup, right? Oh, yeah, so I, sure. I, I'm, I'm just going to say that's probably my, like, hey, you should probably be watching this one. Okay. That's totally fair. Curly, how about you? Man, he kind of like took mine because mm. that's like that's probably the most exciting matchup of the day just well, because of how for ridiculous. That fanatic one, you know, he. Uh... Yeah, 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 my bad. I, I still um, am ex fanatic fan. My bad. No, nah, I mean he, it's all right. It's all right because you know I'm gonna I'm gonna be current with it. I'm actually very excited for FlyQuest versus Gam. I think having Gam as like our first uh, team, it's a worthy opponent. Because number one, I will always hype up uh, the CEO of GAM. He is the biggest personality in all of esports that I've ever seen. Like, he, that man has aura. That man decided he wanted to run the Boston Marathon because his team made main stage, you know, and right. did it. And then still found time to cheer on PSG because they're going to be in the same league next year. Like, this dude is just him. Like, top tier, top tier guy. And then he runs an org that has consistently performed at Worlds for the last three years that they show up. Like taking the game off of top esports, making it farther than any other tier two region, or not tier two, my bad, any other wild card region uh, like next year or last year. I expect them to do it again this year. So if we can beat them, hell yeah. And if we don't beat them, we better shape up. Like, I think it'll be a great litmus test for how the vibe of this tournament is going to go. Yeah, I, I do feel bad for Basil, though, because she's going to have to root. I, I ironically think she's cheering for Gam. She, like, I saw her Twitter I, post, and she was like, uh, Vietnam forever. <laughs> no, I, I think she is as well. She's like, I know I'm a FlyQuest content creator, but Gam. Which, like, I can't even blame her. Yeah, I think... Uh... Yeah, Gam definitely has some, like, fun stuff to offer, uh, for sure. I'm excited to see uh, what they've got in store after they lose to us on day one, of course. Um, I mean, there's some real banger matchups, I think. Uh, Gen G versus Weibo. Top Esports versus T1, I think, is a crazy good matchup. Could Top Esports be the first team, the first LPL team to take down T1? I, very possible. Uh, T1 did not look good uh, coming out of their uh, playoffs. Um, but then here's the one that I'm really interested in. Team Liquid versus LNG. Okay. Uh, you know, everyone thought that TL was going to be the team. Uh, you know, everyone had them pegged as the top North American team until FlyQuest beat them. LNG... Uh, they're a good team, but they're not, like, incredible. I think I said previously that I felt that, you know, China-wise, it's really, like, BLG and top for me that are, like, serious contenders. And then LNG and Weibo are just kind of there for me. I feel like LNG is a very beatable team for Team Liquid. Uh, I think I feel like that's a very winnable game. Um, so I'll be super interested to see how that matchup goes. Uh, that's the one that stands out the most to me. I, I, th I think the big thing I need to see is, um, can TL show the level of discipline and practice that they were showing at the back half of the regular season of summer? Mm. If they get back to that level of play where they were, uh, beating cloud nine, where they were pretty much beating everyone right even in the early playoff stages too like if they show that level of prep and that level of understanding of how they want to move on the map and what they want to play with and how they want to play i i really do think it's a super winnable matchup for lng totally well and for atl sorry no, against no, lng no, is what no, i meant I, to say no i, I understand <laughs> <laughs> cross my words there right 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 um where's yeah. the faith knocks 
No, no, no. I, like, like I said, I, I think, it, no, I, I really do think it's possible for TL to do it. I, I, I'm putting it at like a 55, 45 in favor of LNG, but okay. that's practically a coin flip at that okay. point. Okay. Um, and speaking of also, because I just saw this mentioned in chat, um, Scout was not really available for a fair portion of time, is my understanding, do, dealing with uh, court yeah. drama stuff from EDG. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know how much we'll practice really was decided. actually getting done. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm struggling when it comes to this because, like, I want to be hyped for TL um, because they have actually shown up pretty well in international events this year um, and, like, made it to finals yeah. reliably in both splits. Right. Um, but I, I'm trying to debate whether my hype for that overcomes my firm belief in their cursed energy at Worlds. <laughs> this is the roster that I think could truly overcome it, but I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. Yeah. There's something that happens to Team Liquid once you enter the Worlds tournament every year, <laughs> at least since I've been a fan. Right. Yeah. I yeah, and I I couldn't tell you what that is, but just like something occurs to TL you know, it feels like they're perma stuck in that like three three, um, you know, right on the cusp. Right like they, the cusp. they're the, yeah. they're the tail side of like a coin, and Cloud Nine was the head side because like yeah. Cloud Nine will get these two fours, three threes, and make it into quarters, and then TL will get these like three threes, and then like not make it out either. And right. it was just like it's so unfortunate, man. Yeah, 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 yeah super super unlucky for sure. Um, all right, looking ahead to the potential round two right so we'll talk more about flyquest versus gam i feel pretty confident in saying that all three of us are probably predicting flyquest to win uh spoiler alert spoiler but yes alert. <laughs> so let's say that that occurs right going down the list very quickly the day two opponents get kind of kind of tough um, they get a little scurry yeah, so, I mean, let's say, like, some stuff goes to chalk, right? BLG probably beats MAD. Uh, G2 probably does beat PNG. Um, there's a couple that are kind of, you know, Hanma Life probably beats PSG. There's a couple that are toss-ups, more toss-up-y, like Fnatic, DK, Top Esports versus T1. Uh, Gen G probably will beat Weibo. I think everyone would be shocked if it goes otherwise. TL LNG is a bit of a coin flip for me. But, like, of those matches that if they go to chalk, G2, HLE, Gen G, BLG, <laughs> that's four very difficult opponents. Uh, that's not a fun lineup. So you're almost kind of rooting to, like, snag like a fanatic uh if they win or let or a dom Juan if they take it or lng I if think, they beat tl you know i think i'm just straight aiming for g2 i'm just aiming for g2 yeah or fanatic if they win i mean here's the thing hypothetically i could definitely see like all blue wins on thursday if i'm being so for real uh um, yeah no i i completely agree with that actually yes Oh wow! Uh, is, wow, that is very blue side heavy action. Yeah. Now that I'm looking at it. It's yeah, a, crap. Yeah, the only like, question was the like most fanatic and TL. Well, yeah. is it? Is it? Are they like for sure blue side? Yeah. If, if would, so, looking at Leaguepedia, if they're blue, uh, left side, they're blue. If they're right side, they're red. Well, yeah, but like, is that what it's going to be on the day? Is my question. I would imagine. I would imagine. Uh, but. Assuming everything is on the blue that side. That is though. how it's lined up on the... Uh... Yeah, because uh, all one and two seeds... Oh, I, I I guess they could switch. I don't know. But all one and two seeds are lifted on, listed on the blue side. Yeah. And typically, most of the time when you have side select, at least in this current meta, uh, most teams are opting to select blue side, especially in a best of one scenario. Right, right. Um, yeah. You know what is interesting is... Uh... I'm just looking they did they updated the uh the i think they updated the global power rankings that they put and they put team bds over flyquest by two points for some reason even though flyquest has done nothing 
uh, since this tournament started. Why? Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's... It, what has BDS done? It's probably due to, like, mad, uh, some, like, random mad thing uh, that happened. So, so what happens is because 100 Thieves lost, they also tanked the North American region. Uh, and since the North American rating system got tanked, that technically also tanked TL and FlyQuest along with so it. So wait, did TL... So we're suffering all? because of 100 so Thieves. So technically, uh, Team Liquid, like, no, you don't see any placement drops, but points-wise, they did drop, yes. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, we dropped. Yeah, now we're under BDS, which is crazy. Disappointing. PSG Disappointing. did go up one, uh, which is interesting. Anyway, um, man, yeah. All of LCS just, like, dropped. I, it's so interesting to me. Uh, Rainbow 7 didn't do too bad, but they still dropped two spots <laughs> in the global Wait, rankings. They, they dropped? Hold on, I gotta they look at They dropped two spots, and then... Uh, SoftBank Hawks, they went 0-4, right? And they went up a spot. I'm not even kidding you. They did go up. But how does that work? Dude, I don't know how this works. I this so is I, 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 up. I read the formula on how they're doing the power rankings on this. Yeah. And for the most part, like, I kind of get it. Well, but, like, like, I look at these rankings and, like, yes. Can I quasi agree with these rankings? Yeah. You know, but, like... Like, on paper, like, sure. But do I actually think that, you know, you've got 100 Thieves at 36 and Royal never give up from the LPL at 37? RNG was not good this year. Do I think they would wipe the floor with 100 Thieves? Absolutely, I do. Like, 100%. Okay, okay, I, fi I figured it out. So, Pain beat uh, R7, which... A, I mean, you won, so that's going to move you up, right? Yeah. On top of that, because it was a qualification match to get into the main stage of Worlds, that is, in their in their formula, it's ranked as higher, mm. so the match means more, which means the actual affected rating means more. So that also boosted it more. You also have to consider the fact that PSG made the main stage of plans, which boosted all of PCS up. So you see, that's like, if you look up, Frank Esports, 48 slot. They also went up. So yeah. because of that, that knocked Movie Star down too. Huh. Weird. That is so. That that's just all off of their formula. I'm not saying their formula is the best because I don't think it is really truly like the way you should do things. Um, if you're a big stat nerd, I've been doing some reading in Oracle's Elixir's data encoding section because a lot of those guys in there have their own formulas that they follow throughout Worlds, and a lot of them were giving a lot of criticism to how Riot was doing theirs. Right. Um, but. For the most part, that's kind of what you were saying, Sandy, is like, it, it, for the most part, like, you'll get in the range of where these teams are supposed to be, but it's not very good at, like, stating, hey, this is the definitive, like, sixth best team or the 14th best team or whatever, um, right. whereas a lot of those guys think, in their opinion, at least in that Discord channel, um, like, they can get it a little more narrowed down than that. Is it, um, I feel like it will probably get better slash more accurate as time goes on, right? Um, um I don't really think so. With how stuff, I was the, does stuff the reset formula at the end of the year. No, it, it does not reset. So um, teams are based off of two year increments, and okay. so like FlyQuest from like at the end at the end of this world's, for instance, like because technically FlyQuest twenty twenty two is being taken into consideration here. Okay. At the end of this world's though, FlyQuest twenty twenty two will no longer be considered. It'll be just FlyQuest twenty twenty three and twenty twenty four, which means actually you're probably going to see a tank. We're going to drop, yeah, <laughs> yeah, because you're going to have summer twenty twenty three in consideration without the help of like uh, uh, summer twenty twenty two from FlyQuest. So that's going to kind of look bad on the on the books, and you're going to notice a FlyQuest drop in that sense. So, um, on top of that, it takes into consideration of the region and how the region has done in international tournaments for the past three years. So, two years for the team, three years for the region. Huh. And okay. I believe, if I recall correctly, it's like an 80-20 split. 80 being the team and 20 being the region. Okay. I mean, I think region is definitely important to take into consideration. I, yeah. I'm amazed that they have... Like, G2 is number five worldwide. I don't know if I would put G2 as the fifth best team in the world. You know, like... Man, there, there's just some fascinating... Yeah, so the the other thing they say in the, the article, and this I'll, I'll drop the article after this. I'm going to kind of get in the weeds on this. But yeah. um, the, they say the, the formula that they have is got about a 65% accuracy rating. 
that's not great. That's yeah, no, that's suboptimal. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know what the statistical standard is for stuff like that, but it seems a little small. But I also, I know, like in esports, it's hard to get like really high numbers in that regard as well. Right, of course, yeah. All right. Well, I think that's a good place to put a pause on that conversation. Um, oh, did I disconnect? <laughs> no, you're not. Oh, shit. You're still with us. Yeah, no, you're uh, chilling. Can you not hear us? Uh-oh. I don't think he can hear us. Dun, 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 dun. We'll get him back. Um, Sir Knox, come back. Knox, do not say anything if you think FlyQuest is going to win Worlds this year. All right, there it is. Knox thinks that FlyQuest will win Worlds this year. Uh, yeah! Woo! Join me in the boat. Knox, remain silent if you're willing to coach me to Diamond and TFT. <laughs> okay, all right. Damn, I'm... if only he had come back at that moment. <laughs> That's so disappointing. That is so disappointing. <laughs> All right, we'll get Knox back uh, real soon, hopefully. Um, Curly, any final thoughts on day one of Swiss and or who FlyQuest might play on day two uh, pending a FlyQuest victory against Gam? Um, I don't know why. I'm just really, really feeling like we're going to get matched against... Um, like G2 or BLG. Those are like my two like hot spots. Those are the magnets. I don't know why. It's just what I'm feeling. That's fair. Um All right, so let's move into right. I think I'm back. Welcome. Here. Welcome back, Knoxmore. That was the world's largest lag spike. Everything just went to 10 I'm not even joking. I was reading it on the Discord screen. It went to 12,000 ping. Wow, that's uh, <laughs> that's impressive, actually. Yeah, that's I I don't know what like, happened there. Well, that sounds like when I used to play League of Legends on my laptop in middle school. Damn. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. Knox, you're back Apologies. just in time uh, for us to start talking about FlyQuest versus Gam, uh, and then I'll see you after the show for uh, our uh, coaching to Diamond in TFT. Center. Yeah. Uh, dude. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You missed a few things while you were out. Uh, I, on the I did miss button. a few things. So um, yeah, I do it's crazy know... to me. You're predicting FlyQuest to win worlds. Like, yeah. welcome to the train, dude. I mean, you know, you know I just I, I I got the hype flowing through me. You know, I got I got to back the boys the whole I way. Mean, you'll, you'll have to you have to go back and uh, rewatch the show to 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 see what you missed. But um, all that said, we're going to talk about FlyQuest versus Gam specifically. Uh, I'm going to pull up. Um, Gam's uh, match history a little bit here, but Knox, I want to ask you first uh, what are your keys to victory uh, so to speak for FlyQuest uh, coming into this best of one? So keys to victory for FlyQuest are ideally making sure Kiaya and Levi do not get to run rampant in the game. Uh, I would say, in my opinion, those two are the big key points for the team. Uh, Easy Love uh, has also been solid, but I think Kiaya has been a bigger threat in terms of determining how Gam wants to play the map. Mm -hmm. And so what I really would like to see is I would love to see a lane swap because I've been watching some of Gam's lane swaps both in play and stage as well as uh, in some of the Champs Q games that have been played throughout the day. Um, their lane swaps are just okay. They're not really super, super clean. And I really think FlyQuest has a good understanding due to practice with Team Liquid on how to do a good lane swap. And so I think it can really put Kiaya behind and get Bwipo not... Because, I mean, obviously, lane swaps are not beneficial for either top laner, right? But I think Bwipo can get more out of the lane swap than what Kiaya can. And in general, I think Masu and Busio are a better bot lane than Easy Love and uh, Elio. So with an accelerated bot lane for FlyQuest and a somewhat behind Kiaya, I think that's a really, really good starting point for FlyQuest in this best of one. And then they should just be able to kind of take it from there, but depending on draft. The only other stipulation I'll add to this is uh, I just I don't even want to risk it. Just ban Levi Shivana. Um, he's looked very, very good on it, even though it's a very clearly out of uh, meta, like personal pocket pick for Levi right now. Uh, I, I just I don't want to deal with it. So just ban it, get it out of the way and go next. 
Yeah. I mean, I'm just looking at their match history. So Emo played uh, three games of Yone uh, as well. And Movistar tried to counter a little bit of what they were doing uh, with their bands. Sorry, Rainbow Seven did. Um, because he actually had uh, Gam played three games of Jin uh, and three games of Poppy. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, two games of uh, Poppy. Um, but a lot of gin, a lot of poppy, some rumble, yone, and then otherwise, uh, Levi played Shivana and Wukong. So they really did not show off their pool, uh, in my opinion. I think they, it felt like they held things pretty close to the vest. Uh, and they only had to play four games, uh, which I think was, you know, fortunate for them. They did not have to show a lot off, but... It does feel like there's some, like, targetable bands here. Um, you know, I just looking at, like, where SHG's bands were. Like, Game 1, I think, felt like they were way off the mark. Uh, R7 was a little bit closer, but... Like, I think there's some champs here that you have to be willing to take away if you're FlyQuest. Um, I don't particularly want to see Masu playing Jin. Uh, but you know what I don't want to see him do is play Ziggs into the gin, you know? Uh, I, I feel like there's some some better options. Uh, he's definitely going to be a better Ezreal than CEO uh, is. Um, and definitely I feel more comfortable with him on, like, the Ash. But I just don't want to see that Ziggs uh, coming out. Curly, how about you? What are your keys to victory against Gam? I think a big thing I really want to see us do is kind of control like the tempo of the game. I think that's going <clears> to <throat> be something that Gam could ex uh, exploit. Mm -hmm. Like if we don't make sure we're in control, they'll just like find a little weak spots um, and <clears throat> kind of turn it on us. So I think that's it, it's just going to be a lot of like coordination and decisiveness is what I want to see from the team. Um, and then I, I really do want to see uh, just inspired kind of showing up uh, and making sure he is like ahead of Levi at every possible moment, like whether it's ganking, whether it's farm or whether it's uh, objectives. Like I just want to see him c clearly have a lead on Levi because I think that can then enable us to roll over Gam. Yeah, Hopefully. absolutely. Um what is one champion that if you saw us draft it, excuse me, on Thursday, you're immediately going, oh, no. Like, what is the one champion that you're going to hate to see us draft? Urgot, just because it seems to be like something <laughs> that just really shouldn't bring out. <laughs> Like, uh, yeah, no, just just don't, don't. Yeah, I, I don't love the ergot. That's for sure. The, the ergot, the volibear, the nautilus. Uh, what else? What else can we pull up from the past? Um, right with the volibear, I think it could actually perform real well with the current meta if he executes uh, it properly. I don't hate the volibear, you know. I I'll, I'll leave y'all to your thoughts then. I'm I'm personally <laughs> not a fan of it, but it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Um. No, I, I, I think, yeah, to answer your question, Sandy, I would generally say most of the, like, I don't think Whippo's, I, and I, I ranted about this a long time ago, so I won't go into it too much, but just, I don't think Whippo's playing at a level where his off-meta picks are currently able to carry games right now, so I just don't really want to see Whippo on any of those off-meta carry picks. Just stick to uh, the Aurora if you need to, stick to your Renekton if you need to, whatever you feel comfortable on, but uh, just, just stick to those pretty please and thank you. Yeah, I think for me, uh, anything that is not, like, proactive from the jungle, uh, I want to see inspired, be active, you know, really engaging in the lanes, getting to lane early and often, I think to me is going to be a big key. If inspired is not involved heavily, uh, I think it's going to be a bad time. Like, he, to me, is the linchpin 
for a lot of the good things that our team does. Um, and so for me, get him involved early, get the bot lane ahead early, and let Masu and Busio just carry it. You know, Quad, uh, quad and Whippo, you know, just give them nice, stable lanes. Nothing fancy. Give them something stable. Hell, put Whippo on the Renekton. I don't care. I'll, I'll take a 200th Renekton game. Just give them a nice, stable Renekton. Give Quad a nice, stable mid lane. And uh, let Inspired crush bot lane early. Uh, and I think we'll be pretty good to go there. Uh, yeah. Uh, just to add one one little thing is because in spi- the way Inspired's played all, all throughout the LCS is he's been very farm heavy and mainly reliant on his lanes to just kind of hold their own. Yeah. And he gets the objectives and he sets up map movements how he wants them. Um, that That is something I'm very, very worried about coming into Worlds. And I think... Gam is a good warm-up team for us because I don't think they're obviously nearly as good as some of the Eastern teams, right? right. Um, but I, I am nervous the further the tournament goes, though, is as our our laners run into other laners that are uh, really good and better than them, how is Inspire going to be able to react to that? Because I don't think a lot of our guys have been pushed to that level before. So I'm, I'm keeping an extremely close eye on Inspire starting basically thursday and so on yeah curly any any final thoughts here on uh on day one before we move towards wrapping up i'm just really excited man like it, it's fly quest at worlds Heck like yeah. it's gonna it, it's just a feeling i haven't been able to have before so no matter how it goes i'm gonna be very invested the whole time uh because then it's gonna it's, like i said i think it's really gonna set the vibe for the rest of the tournament so it's just uh yeah i just i just want to see some good league of legends dude no i think it's gonna be good it's gonna be a good matchup it's gonna be a great day one and this is gonna go real fast too i mean we're gonna be eliminating teams on saturday you know, um, I believe is how it's going to go. Um, yeah, either eliminating or qualifying teams on Saturday. I do not know. Yeah, Saturday, it's either an elimination day or that's on Monday and vice versa for qualifying to quarters. Um, but by the time the weekend's over, two teams will be knocked out. Two teams will be qualified to quarters. Uh, and then we'll have the matchup set for Thursday uh, to see who the fi- the next two teams getting eliminated are and the next two teams qualifying to Worlds. And by next weekend, it's going to be pretty set in stone. Nox, you're muted, so I'm not sure. Yeah, sorry. Uh, promotion <laughs> matches will be Saturday. Um, elimination matches will be Monday. Okay, well, there it is. So we'll have teams into quarters on saturday uh and teams out by monday so things are gonna like move along pretty quickly yeah uh, yeah just gotta get through two days of eight best of ones uh what Dude, i'm so hyped for that honestly what like an that's gonna be so blast. fun what a brain blast i'm gonna have to get to work early so that i can leave early so that i can catch the final couple games of the day uh, I mean, I, dude, I'm just going to have it on my laptop all day. Yeah. <clears throat> and I'm going to, like, plan my lunch for whenever FlyQuest plays and hope there aren't any delays. You're taking a late lunch at 2 o'clock. At, uh, well, you're Central Time, so you get a late lunch at 1 o'clock uh, on Thursday. I, I'm, I'm Eastern Time, dude. Oh, you're Eastern. Okay. I always forget what? I, I, I always <laughs> think Ohio is Central Time for some reason. I don't know why I think that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> For what it's worth, Sandy, I sometimes also think Ohio is Central Time, and it's not. Thank you, Knox War. Oh my I goodness! I, I, it, I, I, I get it. This one. <laughs> this, I get this, it. This the Central Time switch isn't until you're like halfway through Indiana. I've never. Isn't it all like really Central of the United States anyway? Like. Yeah, it's all there, right? It's just yeah. all like here's there. the thing. I I will admit, that, like in terms of like. I do not consider Ohio to be part of the East Coast because, like, that was something I fought people on when I first came out here, mm. coming from New York, which is actually, you know, on the coast. Right. Um, 
So, like, that's fine. But I also don't think it's Midwest. Ohio, it's own special thing. Like, I'll be so real for that. But anyway. You know, I'll, but, like, I'll be honest. Is- I, I think my geography kind of sucks because I think I get, like, the order of Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio mixed up. I always think Ohio is, like, Illinois, and I think Illinois is, like, in the center, and I think Indiana is on the far right side. But that's just not how it is. No, that's actually It's Ohio. It's, it's, it's Ohio, then Indiana, then Illinois. Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna go through all of Indiana, Indiana. and then Michigan's just on the top of all of that. Yep, it gets real complicated real fast. <laughs> well, you know what isn't complicated? Uh, the fact that the show is coming to a close, um, and <laughs> that's all that. Always the smooth transition, Sandy. <laughs> and that's all that we've got. Uh, for today, so I'll just say thank you, everyone, for tuning into another <clears throat> fantastical episode of Flight Check. Uh, Thursday, Swiss Stage starts. FlyQuest playing at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. That's 2 p.m. Eastern Time for all Ohioans. Uh, 1 p.m. <laughs> Central for all Texans. Uh, if you're in Colorado, 12 p.m. And if you're on the West Coast, 11 a.m., FlyQuest is Gaiman versus Gam Esports. Uh, and then after that, we'll find out who they're playing uh, as soon as G2 and Pain Gaming wrap up. So you will not have to wait for long to see who their day two matchup will be. Uh, it's going to be an exciting day for sure. We're all pretty confident about FlyQuest taking down Gam. Uh, and you can be even more confident. Uh, if you follow us on Twitter for all of our instant reactions and thoughts, uh, you can be more confident that you won't miss a single brilliant idea that we have that we decide to put out into the internet. Uh, you can catch the show at Flight Check Crew, myself at Santos DB, Knox at Knox War with two R's, and Curly at Curly underscore double Q underscore. Make sure to hop into the Flight Check Discord as well. All kinds of esports discussion and otherwise taking place in there Uh, and if you (coughs) excuse me missed any part of this episode the vod will be up on youtube tonight or tomorrow morning if you're watching that and want to catch the show live we broadcast the episode usually every monday night usually at 8 p.m eastern time that's 8 p.m ohio time uh right here at (laughs) twitch.tv really stressing that in like check crew nox who is in central time any final notes before we wrap up uh final note is don't listen to me when it comes to u.s geography i i get my states mixed up in the wrong spots i'll know the general vicinity but i will i will i will get the order wrong so yeah don't listen to that um actually though i will say uh keep an eye out for pickums make sure you get your picks in i'll do another ping on uh wednesday night before the game start thursday morning and uh shout out to sandy for winning the deadpool i don't think we ever talked about it but uh you and your one go. Uh, uh, e- I e- easy three points. Immortals, so, although so, congrats, congrats on that. I do I, because other people could technically win if all their picks. We could, we could tie, but here's the thing: is like you objectively win because I don't think anyone in our Deadpool has ever gotten every point at the same time in the first move of I, the yeah. season. I was amazed that there were Immortals players left uh, in the Deadpool for that long. Uh, I think that was <clears> absolute most surprising insanity. To me. Yeah, you you won and then cleared every tiebreaker scenario possible. So no, <laughs> you 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 just you just won. Well, that's fair enough. All right, Curly, mm-hmm. uh, shout outs, plugs from you. What you got? I mean, plug of course. Just watch FlyQuest uh, on Thursday. That's kind of the obvious one. But my huge shout out is uh, I got a nice little package here in the mail over the weekend. Mm. Uh, courtesy of one new me, uh, community manager for FlyQuest, and CarlyBot, merch designer extraordinaire for FlyQuest. Um, when uh, when finals was happening, right, I was like very just excited uh, about some of the merch that was available, but I obviously couldn't make it. So I was like, new me, how in the world can I get myself a FlyQuest scarf? And oh my god, there's stickers, there's more. I've got basil stickers. Mm. I did not know Whoa. this was coming in. Whoa. That's pretty exciting. This is also cool. Because like this, number one, I'm excited for this. I got the scarf. There's another thing that dropped that I need to read. Uh, 
Oh my goodness! All right, that's <laughs> that's just a nice little note from uh, from Numi. I will uh, I'll read that later for myself. But yeah, no, I really wanted this scarf because I was like seeing it at all of the social media posts from like the fly uh, staff and all that stuff, and like just it looks so good, dude. It looks so good. It's so cool, like dude. And then on the back, you got the time to fly. Like they like did the thing. They make Dude, it look the really scarf cool. They did so the thing. I need to, man. I need to hop on that scarf before. And I and then like and then it, like bam. It's like, sold out, unfortunately. Oh wow. Well. Like, do look at this. And then when I get the world's jersey, like it's gonna look so good. It's gonna look like I'm going to a football match in uh, 2004. I'm yeah. going to the World Cup, baby. I can't wait. So I've got my, you know, obviously that means somehow, some way I'm going to end up at the O2 on uh, November mm. 2nd, 4th, whatever day that is. No, I'm not. Uh, but I wish. I wish I could be that there for when nice. FlyQuest wins Worlds wearing this scarf and that jersey. But, yeah. So shout out again to Numi and uh, Carly. This is a really cool thing, a really cool piece of merch. And, like, it was just really sweet of them to send it to me. Uh, along with the basil stickers, or I don't know if it's a sticker or just it's just an image. It's still freaking awesome, is what it is. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, awesome, love that. Uh, my shout out is going to be to the the end of the MLB regular season. Uh, today was a wild finish uh, with the Braves and Mets. Uh, unfortunately, they both made it to the. Uh, Unfortunately. <laughs> Unfortunately, they both made it into the playoffs. One couldn't eliminate the other. I was kind of disappointed with that. Um, but, you know, it, that does now mean it's baseball playoff time, and that is probably uh, the best time of the year uh, because October baseball is like nothing else. So that's going to be my shout-out. Watch the baseball playoffs. They're going to be crazy good. Uh, Sh Shohei Otani is having one of the best seasons of all time. Um, and uh, you do not want to miss a single moment of that. All right. We'll be back next week talking about the first uh, week of Swiss, which I believe <coughs> will be through round three uh, by next Monday. Correct. Uh, so we will have two qualified teams, two eliminated teams, uh, and the matchup. Hopefully, FlyQuest is not on the eliminated side. Well, hopefully, they're on the qualified. Still, they still won't be. Yeah. You shut up right now, Knox. They won't be. Hopefully, they're Don't on the Don't even entertain side. the idea. We, we'll have plenty to talk about next week. We'll have tons of matchups to review and tons of things to preview. So for now, we'll say stay safe out there, bite your teeth, and don't forget to hit the head on the nail. And we'll see you all very, very soon. Adios, everybody. Have a good one, guys. Peace, y'all. Yeah, we said we let it go